national anthem of Serbia, please rise. countries 
all over the world, that industry in your own countries will benefit of the results of your research, of the exchange experience, and the knowledge you will bring with you after this conference. Saying all of that, I also wish you to have enough time to learn more about this nice country, about Serbia, about this nice city, and to have enough time for the social part of the conference. I wish you all the best, hard work, but to have enough time also with this. Pleasure ones, and uh, by these words, uh, I officially open the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor. Now uh, we will have another chance to hear this beautiful voice by uh, Mark Koranitovic, our student, by the way, who will sing Gaudam Sigitur. We will not raise, just listen. And after that, Professor Nena Zernic, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, University of Belgrade, and also elected vice rector of the university will address you. Gaudea musigitur juvenes dum sumus Gaudea musigitur juvenes dum sumus Ostiocundam juventutem posmolestam semetutem nos cadere Yeah. 
yellow faculties are belonging to the group of technological uh, faculties. So we have the representatives here of several uh, faculties uh, of the University of Berkeley, but probably some uh, belonging to the natural sciences or institutes. Uh, I hope that this really important event uh, will be very successful, and personally I'm very glad that Belgrade uh, is the organizer of uh, this European conference. So I hope that uh, you will have some more time to explore Belgrade and to take a part in the social activities, some nice trips around Belgrade, some sightseeing, and also, of course, uh, at the future space to enjoy the presentation. So I wish you all a fruitful conference and all the best to all of this conference. Thank you.
There was experimental work in two laboratories, uh, deformation and fracture of polymers and composites, interface fracture mechanics, and finally, the route to the J integral, and it's on the occasion of its 50th anniversary, and Professor James Rice gave the talk yesterday. Many of us were there and really enjoyed it. Um, ESIS has four affiliated journals with Elsevier, Engineering Fraction Mechanics, Engineering Failure Analysis, International Journal of Fatigue, Theoretical and Applied Fraction Mechanics, and we encourage all our members, many of you are members of ESIS and all our non-members and to publish in these journals. We publish special issues in these journals. We also introduced, uh, Francesco actually worked very hard on that, we have a procedures, procedures structural integrity which is open access for proceedings. And many TCs, uh, technical committees, national groups publish uh, from their uh, as a re result of their meetings, publish um, publish issues in Procedia structural integrity. Um, as I said, we also special we also publish special issues in the journals. For example, this one is in engineering fracture mechanics. So I'm going to show you all those that were published between now and the previous meeting, which we had in Catania two years ago. So this was. Um, from one of our TCs, and this is a, was a meeting on crack pads. And the next one is in theoretical and applied fraction mechanics. And engineering fraction mechanics again. And international journal fatigue. So you can see the different subjects, the, the breadth of the subjects that, that we deal with. Um, and going on to 2017, you can see the various issues, the various uh, meetings. Some came from the 21st European Conference on Fraction, which was held at Catania. You'll see a whole bunch of them, one after another. And then you may scratch your head, because I scratched my head when I saw that too. It's not that the volumes 102, 103, 104, and 105 are uh, in the International Journal of Fatigue are all special issues. They, they've done something where they, because they want to have publication as quickly as possible, they put three papers in one issue and four papers in another issue, and then they tell me that there's a virtual special issue. I haven't yet seen the virtual special issue, but I think it's coming. So anyway, several papers are published in each one of these issues, and here's another one from um, the International Conference on Structural Integrity and Durability, which was in 2017. And another conference on structural integrity, where the first one was in um, Dubrovnik, the second one was in Madeira, and um, special issues have been published there. And I want to thank all of the editors because they do a lot of work in, in organizing this, and it's part of, part of the activity of ESA, so I thank all of you. As I said, Procedia Structural Integrity was initiated in, in 2016, and TCs, that, that, that is technical committees, of which we have 17, and I'll show you the list in a few minutes. Um, the national committees, we have national committees in about 25 uh, European countries, and from the European Conference of Fracture, as a result of those, we uh, published proceedings of short papers in the journal, and they have to be short papers. For example, many of you have submitted and will be published in Procedia the short papers for this conference. And then you can extend them. And as long as you extend them to be at least 50% more of what they have been in the short paper, they can be submitted to the special issues. We've had nine special issues, uh, nine Procedia published. And there are three more on the way this year. Here, here they are. And. Um, at this point, each time we submit to either Scopus, both Scopus, EI Compendex, and Web of Science uh, to be accepted in, in their list. We have not finished making an arrangement with them so that it's automatic, but this is, this is on the way. So as far as the technical committee goes, um, we have technical committees, and you can look at our website. I, didn't, I don't have it written down here, but it's just stru structuralintegrity.eu. You can look at our website and you can see our activities. And these 
technical committees meet periodically. I'm, I belong to one of them. We meet twice a year, and we have very fruitful uh, workshop-type meetings. So TC1 is elastic plastic traction mechanics. TC2 is micromechanisms. TC, TC3 is fatigue of engineering materials and structures. TC4, that's one of them that I, that's one that I belong to, polymers, adhesives, and polymer composites. Fracture Dynamics was a very active group. It somehow lost its way. Well, I didn't lose its way. The, um, the chair retired, so we lost the chair. But now it's very active again. We have a chair, and it's active. Ceramics, we need some help with ceramics. So if there's anybody interested in uh, working on that committee, they can see me. Um, numerical Methods, our our committee member, our chair, left for China, although I, I saw him here yesterday and today. So our numerical methods is, is getting up and going again. Concrete is long history. Environmental assisted cracking with a subcommittee on hydrogen degradation. High temperature mechanical testing. And TC12 and the rest of it, some of them that will follow are new, new committees, risk analysis and safety of large structures and components. Education and training had a long history, then it, we stopped it for a while, and now it's going again. And so under education and training, we run the summer school. So this year we had a summer school in uh, Belgrade. Next summer there'll be a summer school in Poland, and many people are interested in summer school. So the council is going to have to discuss and decide how we're going to handle this proliferation of summer schools, which is a very good sign. Okay, integrity of biomedical and biological materials is new. TC15 is also new. Additive manufactured uh, components. Finite fracture mechanics is also new. Non-destructive evaluation is new, and integrity of railway structures is, has a long history. And you may, I've been asked in the past, why is there a gap between TC17 and TC24? Well, there used to be a gap between TC11 and TC24. Somehow there were other TCs during the years that faded away, and so we added five more, and we were filling the gap. So if anybody is interested in starting a TC, has a new subject, not on the board, we're more than open to, um, to suggestion. And of course, I'd like to thank all the TC chairs and there. Uh, ACES has an executive committee, and uh, I'd like to think that we work very hard. Um, and I want to thank the, TC, the executive committee members. Francesco, as I said before, Francesco Jacobiello is the uh, vice president. Alexander Sedmark is uh, the second vice president. Verma Blackman is our secretary and does really very, all, everybody does a really good job. Beppe, I saw Beppe come in and I saw Bamba earlier. Bamba, uh, Beppe is the treasurer. Valerie Schleinikov, who will be coming, I believe, tomorrow as the publications manager. We have a newsletter every six months, which I believe is in the website, but it's sent to the chairs of the TCs and the um, national committees, and they are supposed to pass it on to, to their uh, members. We also have a news that comes out every few months, and that's Francesco sends that to us. He organizes that. Pair, who I haven't seen, but I saw his name on the, uh, on the program. Pear Stola is our blogger. We have a blog. Uh, he reviews papers, papers that are published. He and tries to form a discussion of them on the internet. We don't always succeed. He's been very successful in getting the authors to respond to his review. And it's very interesting to read his review, read what the author has to say about it. So you can look in our uh, website and see, see that. Zillian Zhang, who I saw yesterday, is a liaison to other organizations. And in addition, we have three other members of the executive committee. The chair of ECF 21, who has two hats. Uh, Francesco is also vice president. Alexander, who's chair of the current ECF, ECF 22, and he's also vice president. And Pedro Morera, he's the chair of ECF 
23, which will be held in Madeira in two years from now. So as I said, ECF 23 will be, you can write it down in your calendar. I'm sure you'll receive some information about it. Uh, it's going to be from the 29th of June until the 3rd of July, and there will be a summer school before, uh, before the ECF. Finally, we have membership, and you can join by paying 30 euros. You can do that through the website, which is very easy to do with PayPal or a credit card. Um, so you can pay online. This is our website. Or you can join a national committee. If you belong to a national committee, they pass over a, a, a payment to us for the group of members. And so then you're a member of your national committee and you're a national, you're, um, member of ESIS. And so that's it. Thank you very much.
Once again, Professor Leslie Banks used to introduce Professor James Rice. And of course, before that small ceremony, you will see what it is about. So just one to two minutes of chance for people to think.
through branched and offset fault systems, including effects of damaged fault water zones, physics of fault friction, thermally driven core fluid pressurization, and fault weakening in rapid slip, seismicity, and transient aseismic deformations in subduction zones, tsunami generation and propagation, landslides and the transition to debris flows, meltwater penetration through glaciers, sliding processes at their beds, and iceberg calving, and computational mechanics methodology for problems in some of those domains. He is a fellow of many prestigious societies, has won many awards and medals, received six honorary doctor doctorates, and written over 250 papers. Isis and I are proud to award Professor Rice the Griffith Medal for the long history of his major groundbreaking contributions to fracking.